Today I'm going to adjust the idling current on this Sakai AA1010 receiver. I really don't have to do it. It's something I would normally do. I think if I replace the uh, output transistors, but the unit's open and it only takes me a couple minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and go forward with the job. Um, having having idling current, that's kind of like having a car idling. Just as an analogy here, things just go smoother than, say, if you had to do a cold start. And um, see, four transistors, yeah, that means that um, the transistors are biased slightly. So that basically means that the input signal, that doesn't have to go so far in order to make the transistors conduct. It just makes everything, I'd say, easier. So what I have to do here is take the measurements across the uh, fuse holders. There's one for the left channel, of course, one for the right, and here there's two puts and geometers here, right about where my uh, finger is at, one for the left channel, one for the right. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the, um, shut the power off, remove the fuse, and then connect the ammeter of the meter across that, and uh, I should be reading about 20 to 25 milliampers. And this adjustment, I'm going to do it without having any kind of a, any type, kind of signal come into the uh, into the receiver. So no signal at all. Now here's the two actual adjustments down where I'm pointing out with the screw. Here's the adjustment for the left channel, and here's the adjustment for the right channel. So I let the receiver warm up a couple minutes and it's reading about um, about 52 milliampers. That's over double what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust it down right now. I'm doing the left channel. And it's supposed to be around 25. I want to hit change the scale here. So, right around 25 here. It's hard to get it right on the money because just a tiny <coughs> turn of the screwdriver has a big effect here. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it right about that. that. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other channel. First I have to shut the power off, remove the fuse again, uh, hook up the test leads and then uh, go from there. So right now I'm checking out the right channel and that is way too high too. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that so again it's supposed to be 25 I'm going to just go on a different range now so it's just really hard to get it right on there Okay, I'm almost there. Okay, I think I could leave it at that. And just for the hell of it, I decided to uh, minimize the idling current on the left channel. And you can see right here what happens. There's like a little wrinkle here where the positive side of the here wave meets the negative side there's a little wrinkle right here right there right there and that would be crossover distortion and here I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back up maybe it's possible to see see it go away yeah I think you can see it 
starting to smooth out now and it's uh, going away that's what that does that also they can look a lot uh, worse just depending upon the case